Hi and welcome back to my channel. For the last couple of weeks on my Saturday videos I've been talking about the fact that the builder was here and I was having a pantry built. We needed a pantry because we needed somewhere to store our tinned foods that was accessible to me. Um, we've lived in this bungalow for 30 years and the one thing that bungalows are notorious for is a lack of storage space. So in our kitchen, a lot of the cupboards were so high that me, being a very short person, was struggling climbing a step ladder to get stuff off the top shelves, and it wasn't practical. So we decided to take a little walking cupboard that we had and convert it into a storage space, which I call a pantry. You might call it something else. You might just call it a walking cupboard. But anyway, it's created a space that is usable for me and it's a little bit better organised because I now actually know what I have. Whereas before, I would have stuff on top shelves and then I'm buying replacements before we've used up what we have. So I've got some sort of order to work with now and that feels a lot better. We didn't need to go shopping to fill this pantry. We managed to fill it from all of our top shelves, haven't we Jo? Mm -hmm. And it's been an interesting experience when you suddenly learn that you've got 12 bottles of tomato and you thought you had four. But that's life as a blind person. It can be quite amusing at times. So welcome to our pantry. Here we are. This is in the passage off our kitchen. So it's quite accessible for the kitchen. And Joe will give you a, like an overview of what, what Steve has created. I really like the colour in here. It's grey, but with the electric light it shows up quite differently from my bathroom, which is the same colour grey. Doesn't it look quite different? Yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. So can I go in there? Yep. Okay. Right, the bottom, this before was just wasted space and it really was just a tip, wasn't it? Just a junk room. Yeah, Everything it was, just yeah. just got shoved in here out of the way. So in a couple of ways it's worked well because it's enabled us to get rid of a load of junk and it's enabled us to create some useful space. So, on the bottom shelf we keep all our water. I mean, this was only finished last night, so this is day one and things may have to be jiggled around a bit to get it to be user friendly, but day one of the new pantry. Bottom shelf water, Joe buys still water in five litre bottles, and we buy sparkling smart water in I think about five or 600 ml bottles. So the still water's Joe's, some of the sparkling is mine, but most of it will be Joe's. The second shelf is for like cleaning things, laundry things, toiletries. So we only have a single cupboard under our kitchen sink and you tend to get things pushed to the back and then you want something, it's right at the back, you've got to drag everything else out and it just makes it hard work. I don't want that, I want a simplified life. As I say, I'm always trying to become a minimalist. It might not look like this when you see the food on my shelves. But for me, I'm looking for a simpler life all the time. So they're now accessible, I know what I've got, I can just run my hand along and find exactly what I need. When I'm getting low on something, I can replace it. Next shelf up is, in effect, my shelf. And this is where the 12 bottles of tomato come in. I honestly thought I had four. When we took all the stuff off the shelves in the high cupboards in the kitchen, we discovered I had 12. But that's okay. They will get used because that's the only tomato passata type thing that I use now. I have... Um, I do like baked beans, I'm you know, really liking for baked beans. I'm a Branston girl or I'm a Heinz girl. These Heinz ones are a good price in Aldi at the moment. I have tried the low sugar, low salt baked beans, but I, I mean we've tried them for what, six months? I quite like them. You quite like them, I didn't, did I? No. Just, no, I didn't like the sauce at all, so I was like taking most of the sauce out and not eating it, and that just made it as a fact. Some of the tin things that I use here, um, we have the Heinz Creation curry lentils, which are free on plan. We have the Heinz Creation chickpea tagine, which is free on plan. We have, is it this make, Joe, of the, are these the free from? Yeah. There's a range in, we find them in Morrison's, of free from sort of curried things and spicy things. The bean cassoulet is free. The vegetable balti is, 
is it three and a half sims? Yeah, three and a half. But yeah. check for yourself because you always need to because things change. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's three and a half. But it's worth the three and a half sims if you like vegetarian things occasionally. Um, all this kind of thing is handy to have in. What's that one, Joe? Uh, that's the curried lentils. But oh. there's the chickpea dal in the middle. That yeah, one. that one, yeah. Life as a blind person can be interesting with tins. I once remember opening a tin of peaches and throwing it into a spag bol instead of tomatoes. But that's another story for another day. This is what Debbie shows us when she makes her curried loaf. Now, the, this is the only chickpea dal that I can find anywhere now that is free. I know the Asda one used to be, it isn't anymore. So if you come across a chickpea dal, don't assume it's free as I once did, because it can be up to four sins, and maybe more, depending on whether they've got oil in. But that one is nice, and you can use it as a side dish. It's not just good for um, putting in curried rice cake thing, curried loaf. Anything else on here that is unusual? Uh, chopped tomatoes, you've got the pouches of curried lentils from Aldi. But they're more for me, I'm not sure of the sins on there. No, they're yours, aren't they? So, that's my shelf. Then we move up to Joe's shelf. And we're going to start at that end with rice. Joe's a great lover of white basmati rice. And it's just such a convenient way um, to a quick dish. And when he comes in and he's short of time, he can cook something quick and throw a pouch of rice in the microwave. Now the Tilda white basmatis are two sins, and they're really, that's nice rice. Some of it I find too dry, but that is nice. There is a tomato one, there's a lemon and herb one, there's a mushroom one. They range between two and a half and three and a half sins. There are some that have beans in. You have to watch those because they tend to be about four and a half sins. But they're handy things to have in your cupboard or your pantry for a time when you come home and you need something quick. Working along there, Joe, what have you got up there? Uh, tins of chickpeas and red kidney beans and some lentils. Yeah, Joe loves pulses and legumes. And of course on plan they are all free. Something I didn't show, which is here. Joe and I both favour the same kind of tuna. We like the John West No Drain because, I don't know if you can hear, solid tuna. It's not mushy and watery. And I think with a lot of the tuners, um, especially where it says tuna chunks, that's usually kind of the cut-offs from, from a tuna, not the steaks. And it tends to be very, very waterlogged. So if you don't like tuna that's really, really waterlogged, this is good. Now, I have it in brine. Joe has it in spring water. I find the spring water one a bit dry. This is usually five pounds for three tins, which seems excessive. But at the moment, in Sainsbury's, and I think one or two of the other big supermarkets, it's on offer where you get three tins for four pounds. I would recommend you buy it and try it, because if you want to enjoy good tuna, it's streets ahead of the soggy stuff. It really does make a difference. So up there, Joe, you would have your John West tuna, yeah? Yeah, I've got tuna up there. There's some uh, tins of salmon, um, tins of mackerel, and tins of sardines. Yeah. And um, Joe's salmon, he always buys it skinless and boneless, don't you? Not always. I don't mind it with the bones, but... But you prefer I, it I think, skinless. yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's just easier, isn't it? And if you shop around, you can get good deals on that. I mean, nobody wants to pay £3 odd for a tin if you can get it on a good deal. And quite often, Tesco's or Sainsbury's will have it on for a good offer. Well, we've picked it up quite a few time, times on the reduced shelf in Sainsbury's, haven't we? Yeah, we have, yeah. We've suddenly walked past it and Joe's gone, oh, look, there's half a dozen tins down to £2 a tin instead of 360 So you just pick them up and, you know, store them for when you need them. So that's everything on your shelf? Yep. Yeah. And then on the top shelf, for things out of the way that you don't use very often, the base is up there for my food processor. Our Nutribullet lives up there. Our suit maker's up there. Oh no, this, sorry, the suit maker isn't up there. Isn't it? Is that on no, my shelf? It's on your shelf, it's at the back of your the shelf. The suit maker's at the back of my shelf because it was too tall for that shelf, wasn't it? Yeah, you can it? kind of see it, like, yeah, tucked so away down there, here. yeah. Um, Joe's wellies are up there, ready for <laughs> snow next winter. And then at that end, now this is another funny story. About a month ago, our Breville water boiler conked out. 
and so we have to buy a new one. So you go straight onto Amazon and you order one and it comes the next day. Then, if you're anything like me, when you're actually clearing the junk room out to turn it into a pantry, you find a brand new Breville water boiler, which you bought a couple of years ago, just in case yours ever conked out, and you forgot you got it. So we've got a spare up there, which hopefully we won't need for a good long while, because the other one lasted us seven years. So yeah, Steve's put in good, solid shelves, and then we found some nice, I don't know if it shows on there, Joe? Yeah, it does. This um, shelf covering, was from Hobbycraft. It's five pound a roll. You get 180 centimetres by 50 centimetres on a roll. And it just protects your shelves. It's loose, it's like matting, but any kind of shelving, um, it, it just protects it. Found it because my mum has it in her kitchen cupboards. And I said, oh, where'd you get this from? Hobbycraft. So that was good. So, and it costs me like, well, I had to buy three rolls to cover all the shelves and I think it will protect them and save them from too much damage because I chose to have them emulsioned rather than glossed. So, let's have a look in the fridge. Am I going to be in the way? Can you look over my shoulder? Mm. Again, pretty right. much a Slimming World fridge. Um, in the bottom drawer, Joe keeps his monster, sugar-free monster drinks. In here, we've got stain the drinks, got skimmed milk, which is only because if somebody else comes in for a cup of tea or something, we need milk. These were a new find in Sainsbury's last time we were there. Oh, off a bit, sorry. Yeah. Uh. And this is vitamin tea. Yeah, vitamin tea. I don't know what vitamins it has, apart from it has niacin, vitamin it's B. Peach flavour vitamin tea, it's got niacin, vitamin B6, vitamin B12 and vitamin C. So good for women with the bees in it. That was one pound twenty, I think, a bottle, or was it one ten, something like that. And a nice cold drink. Joe used to love um, iced tea when he was a kid. So we excuse that noise. We thought we'd try it, but for the five hundred mil bottle, it's actually five calories. So free on plan. And it's peach flavored. And it's peach flavored. Yeah. Joe has some of the. Now these are low sugar, aren't they? They're not yeah, sugar the low free. calories uh, leucosides. Low calorie leucosides. I think one of those is 50 calories. Yeah, I won't check the sins on them. Though. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking as a slimming world, they'd be careful, don't go drinking it thinking it's free because I'm sure it's It could be calories. like two and a half. It could be like two and a half sins. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know what flavor they are even. Orange. Orange. I don't no. like leucosides. It just reminds me of being sick as a kid. When it used to come in glass I don't bottles. like leucosides, but that doesn't taste like the original. Uh, when we were children, it came in glass bottles wrapped in like orange cellophane and it was for medicinal purposes. You only gave it to your kids when they were sick because it was expensive and it was high in glucose. It made you feel better, but it was never ever sold as like a health drink the way it is now. On this little shelf here, we have our cheeses. This is, excuse the peeping. Yeah, it's the fridge reminding you to close it. Close it up. St. Helen's goat's cheese. That's a hard cheese. That's from Waitrose, yeah? Yeah. The mature that's goat's cheese. The yeah. mature goat's cheese. That's about four pound fifty a block, and it's gorgeous. It's on offer at the moment. Is that on offer? Yeah, wasn't it three pounds something? Oh, like three thirty-three or something funny like that. This is the feta cheese that I tend to buy. This is about two pound ten p in Sainsbury's. Now I've tried the feta cheese from Aldi, and it's really nice tasting, but it's really wet. And Joe can't stand the smell of it. Tastes good, the Aldi one at 95p, and I would recommend it. This one's better, purely because it doesn't smell so strong, which puts a lot of people off feta. And this one's organic, it's just delicious. So that's that. And then this goat's cheese, this is Marks and Spencer's Inglewhite. Mm, yep. This one is gorgeous if you're going to melt it. So if you were going to toast a bagel and melt cheese on it, that's your one. But then I would have that as um, sins. You could, I don't know if it's a healthy extra or not, but I would have that as sins or the mature one. Higher up, that's fine. That's, that's it empty. for the shelves, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right, so he's got his monsters. Can you see over my shoulder? Yeah. Monster drinks in the bottom drawer, which are Joe's. I've actually stopped drinking those because I don't think they were doing my weight any good. This is one of Joe's new favourite things. This is turkey rashes. These again are from Sainsbury's. Now, 
One of the good things about this pack is it's resealable, so you can open it, take out four rashes and the top just sticks back down again. That makes a big difference for storing food safely. Um, how many grams in a pack? Um, 200. 200 grams. It's eight rashes. Eight rashes, £2.50. And you say it's really nice, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's great. Makes a change from bacon. Yeah, like I don't like um, fat on meat. I don't like the look of it. I don't like the taste of it. I don't, yeah, it just really puts me off. But those don't have any on. He's a Jack Spratt who ate no fat, literally. If you serve Joe something with fat on it, he would just leave it. He wouldn't eat the meat and leave the fat. He just couldn't face it. So, because these have got no fat on at all, that's a good way for Joe to have turkey rashes. Now, we have the bacon medallions from Sainsbury's. I think these are two pound for eight medallions. Sometimes you get a bit of fat on them that needs to trim in, but you will eat that, won't you? Yeah. If the fat's all been trimmed off before it's cooked. I eat them as they are, because it's there's nothing fifty percent really. less fat. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. So that's two pounds. The turkey rashers are two pound fifty. Um, these are my what I call proper yogurts of choice, full fat yogurts. These are, we count two and a half sins because the slightly smaller part is two sins. This one is of course not on the app, how surprising. But two and a half sins for one of those and that is gorgeous. Add it to anything, it's worth two and a half sins because it's so creamy and it's satisfying and satiating because it's got fat in it. So I'd rather spend two and a half sins on something like that. And you think that's half a Freddo, you know? Whoever eats half a Freddo, nobody. But if I can have that and a pack of um, Sainsbury sushi, which I'll show you in a minute, for the same sins as a Freddo. I know which way I'm going. That works better for me. Um, we have always Asda Quark. I've tried all of the others, and I, I know it's down to preference, it's down to personal taste. And some people like um, the ones, I mean, I find the Aldi one too cheesy. Um, the Tesco one is okay. If I can't get this, I would, I would fall back on the Tesco one. The only thing that stops me there is this is 75p. The Tesco one is 95p. So, this one I choose. Right. Next shelf up, Joe. These are free from meals that Joe would use. So they're for people who are dairy intolerant, who can't have wheat, who can't have gluten and stuff like that. There's some meatballs in there, but they're for Joe's dad. And they're the Swedish meatballs from Sainsbury's, one and a half cents each. So, and that's 5% beef mince from Aldi, £1.99 for the 250 gram size. And we prefer to buy it in that size because Joe would eat one of those at a time. And then up on the top, is that Tesco's? Yeah, Tesco and then Sainsbury's. Tesco fish sushi, two and a half sins. Sainsbury's vegetarian sushi, which is my absolute favourite. Again, two and a half sins. And I think I must be the queen of sushi because I have two packs just about every day of the year. Because it's what I like to spend five sins on. It's a good way of spending my sins. I'm not going to show you what's in the freezer because I've done that before and it only has fish and fruit and a few corn things in there. I'm trying the corn pâtés and I'm trying the corn Swedish meatballs because Tess says they're good and if Tess says they're good I'll take her word for it. So yeah, that's my new pantry and I hope you enjoyed sharing it with me. We will be back on Saturday. Have a great few days and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.